All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for a special edition Sunday night. Goddamn hot tag podcast, YouTube slash iTunes, whatever the fuck, however you want to call it. We are here. It's Sunday. Usually do it on Tuesdays. We've been switching around all the time. This is just a special edition, extra one. Um, I got my friend Tony Rufo joining us. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, my man? You've been on the podcast before. Yeah. So. What's going on, man? Glad to be back. As always. Um, yeah, man, what do you want to talk about first? Let's talk about, uh, we were talking off air a little bit, talking about NXT. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, great show, top to bottom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here for a special. All right, let's get rid of that. All right. I, I thought it was phenomenal, man. Oh, I completely agree. Hands down, best show they've done all year. Yeah, uh, I thought it was best show they did. Yeah, now before we go ahead and review the actual show, did you see Sammy Callahan or uh, Solomon Crow at the end of the show? Uh, come out? Yeah, yeah, I noticed. What the hell is going on with his tan? Dude, I don't know. He's down in Florida, man. Maybe he just went outside. Oh, dude, he, he looked orange. Is that a new gimmick? Is he doing like I don't a... know, man. Well, I don't I know, because don't... he's been posting pictures uh, of, like, like, I guess crowd shots or whatever of NXT matches he's been doing. I mean, he's still rocking the same gear, like, you know. Right. And the, like, the leather jacket, just, yeah, a little tanner. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I just hope he doesn't come out with, like, a Guido gimmick, you know? <laughs> no, oh, dude, no, that gimmick's taken and being used properly. What? In NXT yeah. already. <sighs> yeah. But, uh, I, honestly, man, Sammy Callahan... Uh, you know, I I fucking love that guy, man. He's uh, you know as you know as you know we were from the Northeast, so we got we were lucky enough to see him on the Indies for a long time. That guy's fucking awesome, man. I really hope oh, he's a proper shot. He's fucking awesome. Yeah, no, he just I forget uh, what his injury was that he that he's been that he was put like uh, not on the back burner, but you know, right. He had to heal up. I think he he messed his leg up or something. If memory serves. Um, no, I mean, I completely agree, man. Dude puts on a good match whenever he's out there. Uh, everyone kind of forgets he got signed, but it's only because they haven't, you know, debuted him on TV yet. But, I mean, that's fine. You still have someone in your back pocket, I mean. Yeah. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. I mean, just wait till people get to see uh, Kevin Owens and Solomon Crow face each other because it's happened. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was lucky enough to uh, watch it, not go there, but watch... Uh, I think uh, a year or two ago, PWS had a show in, like, uh, December, I believe. Right. It was Callahan versus Steen, and I'm like, well, this is going to be fantastic. And sure enough, was. Yeah. Let's go ahead and give uh, PWS a shout-out, man. I, I fucking love Pro Wrestling Syndicate. I think they, they run fantastic independent wrestling shows. Professionally done. Not not some bullshit, like, fucking, you know, Extreme Rising or, or any of those fucking companies. Um, You know, I was there... I. Th- I think WrestleMania weekend, WrestleMania 29. Uh, if I can, if I can recall correctly, I think, I think Extreme Rising was doing like three shows, and uh, yeah, none of them happened. Right, none of them happened. So you know, I had, a, I had a hotel ready, I had my tickets. So basically, uh, Pro Wrestling Syndicate actually uh, gave me like half off. Yeah. For, uh, tickets in. So you know, so I, I went to their show, awesome stuff, man. They had fucking Jushin Thunder Liger against uh, John Morrison. Yeah, you know, and the great. best thing was Sabu came out in the beginning because he was supposed to face him in Philly. Oh, yeah. The first time they ever had a match in America because obviously they wrestled in Japan. Right. And um, I don't care that he's held together by duct tape. I still would have gone to see the match. Oh, yeah. that's um, Honestly, that's the reason that I, I, I wanted to go it was uh, Sabu against Liger and seeing, you know, Damien 666 and, and Super Crazy in the ring. So, uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen, but. Yeah, that, I mean, and it's a drag because it was cool to see Stevie Richards get a world title. Right, right. Uh, does Luke Hawk still have that extreme? I don't know. Dude, I don't know. The only thing I know that's going on with Luke Hawks right now is he's, like, doing Styles clashes to everyone and then saying, fuck you, AJ Styles, every time he's done doing it because he does it right. And and you know what, man? Honestly, I, I love Luke Hawks, man. Great guy. Um this guy, his 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 way of building up a feud is fucking awesome. Because, you know, everybody knows kayfabe is, is done, but yeah. he's still kind of doing it. Remember the whole thing with Matt Hardy? He was building yeah, that yeah, yeah. fucking year. And uh, same same thing with AJ Styles. I think I think he's uh, taking the same route. 
I I hope I I really hope that is what that leads to, man. Yeah. Um, there's a match coming up uh, in the next like two or three weeks. It's out in uh, Hollywood. Uh, I think it's champ champ championship wrestling from Hollywood or family wrestling in Hollywood something. It's um, yeah. Morrison versus Styles, two out of three falls uh, for the title. Uh, no disqualification, no count out. Uh, there has to be a winner. Man, that's gonna be fucking awesome. That's a showstopper right there. Oh yeah, that's actually kind of surprising because uh, you know, I listened to MLW Conan's podcast and he was talking about how Lucha Underground has everybody under a strict contract. So it's kind of surprising hearing that uh, Morrison is able to do any wrestling show. under uh, uh, a completely different name. Um, no. Yeah, so it's like, I mean, he's Johnny Mundo on Lucha Underground. Uh, I don't know the name he's using in this this uh, Hollywood fed. It's uh, probably one of the few names he's used. But uh, I guess that's one way around it. Yeah. It's kind of surprising how that works, because he's not wearing a mask or anything, so clearly you can tell it's uh, Johnny. Oh, yeah, no, dude. The, uh, the, like, the flyer I saw for that show, man, it's him with the shades, the jacket, the whole shebang. Yeah. It's just like... Nope, that's clearly not the same man. But, I mean, and not speaking of Lucha Underground, I really do want to. I gotta get caught up on that. Oh, dude, it's 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 awesome. I actually just caught up to uh, episode six uh, yesterday. Fucking awesome. I I just wish I got it on my television, you know, because going through YouTube, yeah. watching the shitty qualities, man, it, it just it 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 ruins the the experience for me, you know. I've been having a me and a friend of mine. He told me first. Uh, we both have Comcast. They have it on demand, but every time you try to play it, it doesn't work, and it's getting really frustrating um, because I want to be caught up. I was, like, two episodes in that I watched online, and, I mean, you know, I can plow through the other ones. I mean, one, I'm happy to see Matt Cross on TV. I'm really happy that he's um, on a national network right now. That's great. Um, he's a great wrestler. I mean, he's under a mask and everything, but you can't hide that beard or that wrestling ability. Uh, no, you can't. I and mean, he's, playing, man. he's fucking awesome. Were you now? Were you at the Lucha show at the uh, the Philadelphia one, Mask Mania? Yeah, yeah. You were okay. His, I, his, I didn't. His, his, uh, I was sitting right near the middle of the entrance where like they they were coming out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I didn't see you, but uh, his match against uh, I forgot the guy's name. What was his name? Um, Dude, I, we do this every time. I know he was so. It was such a good fucking match too, man. I forgot. Give me two uh, seconds. I'm gonna look it up. I forgot it. But yeah, man, Matt Matt Cross. Um, I, I wish they actually brought that guy back. The uh, the you know the the fucking uh, she male guy that was uh that wrestled Matt Cross at that show because that he was he was fucking awesome, dude. I I, I you know I questioned it first when he came Cassandra. out. What's his name? Cassandra. Cassandra. There you go, Cassandra. That guy, man. He might not look like it, but that guy can fucking wrestle. He, He's been doing it 20-plus years, man. He's unreal at his, at his job. Oh, yeah. And, uh, he actually got injured at that show, I believe. That's why uh, he was taken out for a while. Dude, that was the, the, the uh, match of the night, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Nothing against anyone else on that show, but that oh, was just a very good match. Best match of the night. But uh, I, I honestly, I wish they could... Uh, they could bring Cassandra, Cassandra in for uh, Lucha Underground. I think he would be awesome in there, man. Even having a rematch with Matt, Matt Cross. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not like the like it's a gimmick that gets over. If it didn't, he wouldn't be as successful as he is. And for the past twenty plus years, he's been doing this. Yeah. I mean, plus, let's face it. You know, the exo exoticos in, in Mexico. Uh, you know, it's a different culture over there. It's oh yeah. Really socially accepted. Of course, now it's more socially accepted than ever in the states. But you know, really, in the in the Latin culture, it's not really a big deal. And yeah, it gets over. I mean, you, you saw it in Philly firsthand. I saw it in Philly. So the funniest thing is, he says he he still catches shit from wrestlers because there are a lot of exotico wrestlers who aren't homosexual, and he just happens to be. And a lot of people have a problem with it still, and I think it's hilarious. Yeah. It's like, you're greased up. You're in underwear, and you're gonna. You're really, but not to get off topic. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> that's ignorance for you. I mean, he's, you know, 
got these Dude, I, players that, that all these that's stuff. a show that everyone should should check out. I mean, it was a good. There was awesome trios matches, awesome tag matches. Um, Wagner Jr. and uh, and Laparka was cool. Um, and we had a uh, homicide also. Homicide, yeah. Sabu, Damien six six six. Beast yeah. yeah. Um, dude, that was yeah. He was he was in and out, man. Homicide after his match. Oh yeah, you got all I remember is Bell rung. He was gone. X Pop showed up. I guess he yeah, lived in Philly now. Commentary. Yeah, he lives in Philly now. I guess. Dude, I really. He has a really good mind for uh, wrestling. Just hearing him talk about shit and like shoots and whatnot. Yeah, man. He when he's he heard him on uh, JR's podcast this week. When he was sober, man, that he sounds awesome. Yeah, I completely agree. And the few times I've seen him at Chikara, I mean, honestly, he has a gut, but that's it. I mean, oh yeah, it's not looking bad, and uh, he's, he's worth worth seeing for sure. Yeah, it's funny you actually mentioned uh, Chikara, because uh, I, I actually got a couple of their DVDs mm -hmm. recently. And, uh, yeah, the one, two, three kid was on there. He had a match against Generico, which was fucking awesome. I mean, I didn't expect it to be that great of a match. They had a great match. Uh, I think he tackled all the Genetic against the team. You wouldn't think he'd be able to pull it out, and it's like, the thing is, man, he was so young compared to everyone else in the clique, or whatever you want to say. Right. I mean... And he has a really, I mean, he wants to do what he can in the business, and that's awesome because if you uh, if you look up all these old matches before he was signed to WWE, um, oh yeah, versus Jerry Lynn and stuff like just the stuff that when they're you know because they're both from like Minnesota, yeah, like um, kid man, yeah, it's it's really good to watch, man. Oh yeah, and his matches in general are good to watch. I mean, he was like the deciding factor for uh, a lot of WWF stars because they'd have like like you know dark matches with them. And if he gave the thumbs up, then they, you know, right, call him back or whatever. Right. Yeah. Pretty much. Now everybody they do. They're against the one, two, three kid. He was a re like whenever they would go to Japan, he would give wrestlers tips on, you know, how to get over with the crowds and everything. Like, and you know, be a little stiffer and how to get over with the Japanese crowd. Right. It's not gonna work. Yeah, I actually have a, I have an NWA tape. That has Sabu and, and the Lightning Kid from, like, 93. Um, I saw clips of it in this, like, there's this fan-made Sabu documentary on YouTube. It's, like, two-plus hours. I've seen it. Oh, it's awesome, dude. The only annoying thing is there's the, the background music isn't really background music. It's very loud. Yeah. Um, but I actually sat down and watched the whole thing. Really is a good, good, good uh, documentary. Yeah. And well worth checking out because it's free and it's made to be free. It's the person who made it didn't want anybody to pay for it. Well, he, he can't have anybody pay for it legally, that's why. But that's Yeah, it. I know, but I mean, I'm just, you know, you don't have to shell out 15 bucks for a download or 20 bucks for a DVD. Yeah. I was actually impressed by the uh, Japan footage that he had. I mean, I have I have most of the FMW stuff, but he had some fan cam footage, a bunch of other cool stuff that uh not too many people got to see. Yeah. So, anybody watching Sabu fans, go ahead and search it. It's on YouTube. Just type in a Sabu documentary. I'm you sure. You will not regret it. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's in six parts. So, uh, it's good stuff. But, yeah, uh, really good speaking, of, speaking of X-Pac, uh, that's another guy that I think can really, you know, be a helping hand in, 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 in Lucha Underground. Because, you know, it's it's somewhat of a name. I'm sure he's he's not charging that much. You know, yeah. and he can still go. And, and he's I wrestling people a lot, so... Even if they had him on commentary, I guarantee you he's charging less than Vampiro wants. I mean, Vampiro, let's be honest, he's not very good. No, he think well, Vampiro thinks he's God's gift to wrestling. Yeah, he's, he's, he's not very good. Um, he doesn't like that he was talked bad on in Chris Jericho's book. I mean, the thing is, his matches are good. They are, and I mean, I dug him in WCW when I saw him when I was younger. I was like, you know, 10 yeah. to 12, but... Yeah, I think he was just in the wrong company. That's all. Yeah, yeah. He, he did some good stuff in Mexico. I mean, oh yeah, that's. I mean, he was a god there, and the dude, like, you watch like stuff. It's like from like ninety or ninety two or something like that. He comes out to Welcome to the Jungle, yeah. and the crowd is going absolutely one thousand percent ballistic. Like it's right, it's literally like Jesus Christ is coming out to for a match, and they're going ballistic for him. 
And he doesn't disappoint. It's just, it's like he's a dude who started to believe his press clippings about him. Yeah, it's one of those guys in the business. But um, yeah, man, Vampiro, he's he's looking he's looking rough. I mean, I know he's he's in his forties, but I'm sure. Well, I mean, I I of course don't know the facts, but I'm sure he had a little bit of hard time. Um, on that commentary note, I'm really happy Matt Stryker's there. Uh, yeah, did you hear his? Uh, well, I guess you haven't watched Lucha recently, but he he actually took a shot at the Miz, which uh I thought it was clever. <laughs> what did he say? If you don't, if you remember. It's actually a, a match with uh, Matt Cross against one of the Exoticos. It's uh, similar to Cassandra, but the guy is not nearly as talented as uh, Cassandra, which which really made me, uh, you know, question the company. Like, why would you not get Cassandra? Because I'm sure they've probably, you know, heard of the Kevin Klein Rock show, probably seen the match. They put on a great match. But I don't know. But anyway, uh, yeah, they were talking about, uh, like, Exoticos and, you know, Matt Striker, of course, the, the wrestling encyclopedia that he is and historian that he is. He started talking about... Gorgeous George and, and all these fucking, uh, you know, gay wrestlers in the beginning of the days. And then he threw in uh, the Miz's name in the middle and uh, <laughs> chuckled it. <laughs> I thought it was clever, man. I was like, why, why, why is he taking shots at the Miz? But Why not? Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Miz, so, so fuck <laughs> off. Dude, I mean. Terrible, man. That guy's garbage. <sighs> that now is awesome. Miz, trash. Don't worry, man. We're getting to the point where Mizdale's coming, then you know, gonna they're, they'll have their match, and it'll be fine. Yeah, I hear you, man. But uh, what else can we talk about? We're talking about NXT, and then we just started talking about uh, Lucha. Okay, well, no, I mean, um, let's see. What was the the opening? Was what Owens coming out? Great thing. Uh, everyone seems to love what is is it? C.J. Parker. C.J. Parker, yeah. I mean, like Rollins was talking about him, and a few other people have been. I mean, I can't really say what his matches are like because he has. I, I haven't seen him in a lot besides squash matches, but, I mean, it's a gimmick. It's a gimmick that can get over for sure. Um, what, the, hit, the hippie gimmick? Yeah, like, yeah, dude, there is no planet B. That's such a yeah. good line. Yeah. But, uh, I just, I don't know, man. People hate him. Well, that's what he's, spo- well, he's supposed to be hated. Is he? I, I, I he don't know. Be he came out as a face. I mean, many months ago when I started watching NXT, I stopped watching it for months now. But when I was watching it, he was supposed to be a face. And people were still shitting on him. They, they hated him from the beginning. We'll go into that. Uh, you know, Owens comes out, biggest thing in the world. Yeah. Completely delivers and then some. Uh, looks in the best shape of his life. And I mean... I saw him wrestle six months ago, and he looked good there. It's him versus Styles at uh, House Hardcore. Um, yep. I think I think that was a good match, but I mean, he looks even better now. It's yeah. like Definitely. I can't believe. It. Apparently, wait. apparently, he did not break his nose, contrary to popular belief. Thank, and I hope that's true. Um, good match. I mean, cool to see you know sent- rolling sentons and shit. Uh, yeah, I was surprised, man. I was surprised that they let him off the leash a little bit. Dude, I think. Oh, wait till they let him do a package pile driver. You think they're gonna let him do it? Yes, they do. Ah, oh, man. I don't know. I guess I don't know, man. Watching. See, I hate saying this because <laughs> I tend to say it every six months when they give me a good fucking show, but it kind of gives you that feeling like like they're heading towards a new direction. Mm-hmm. And but we said this after fucking WrestleMania because you know Brian got the title and Cesaro was getting a push. And then they fucked it up again. So I don't. Oh, you can't say much with Brian because of an injury, though. Right, right. But I know the Cesaro part. I do. I. I mean, McMahon said it on on the the market right. also. And I don't think I've ever. I mean, I have, but I Steve Austin just looked flabbergasted. Um, Shit, I was. I mean, Mc, uh, the reason, come on. I love him. As much as I love like McMahon, man, he he's in, he's going nuts. He got put in the doghouse because he said people didn't want to see Cena versus Orton for the, like, 900th time. Right. I mean, and that's fair, fine, you know, they're the, like, two, two of the top names in the company, you know, you're talking shit, fine. I understand that, but when you can consistently put on great matches, I mean... Yeah, I mean, you can't hide talent. Dude, I don't want them, I mean, as much as I love uh, New Japan and... Any other like Puro company over in Japan, I don't want to see him over there yet. I want to see him thrive in WWE. 
Honestly, uh, I, I can see Cesaro going to New Japan. I, that's what I mentioned uh, last week on the podcast. I can really see him just just waiting it out, let the contract expire, and you know, head over to New Japan. I think, and I think I and I think it would be New Japan. I don't think he'd be going to Noah or um any, no. or, any or Michinoku Pro, like any smaller company. I mean, I don't yeah. follow all, I don't follow oh, yeah. at yeah. all. So I can't tell you anything about all Japan anymore. Um, All Japan is dead almost. So, well, it's been that way since 2000. Right. So they're they're on a deathbed, and uh, you know, Wrestle One is whatever. Uh, I, I I mean, you know, it's not Muda's company. He's not the face of the company. I love him to death though, so I'll follow it. Um, I I'll watch what I can when I can see it. So I mean, but that's only I mean, he's in my top favorite wrestler. So now, have um, you, have you been following Big Japan at all? Not super current. Um, who's who's up there now? I have is is it just pretty much uh, Kasai and and Kasai's uh, barely on show. I mean, he's, it's, he ain't doing like singles really anymore. Um, I don't know. I, I I'd have to look into it. I mean, yeah, I, I haven't watched it for a while. And to be honest, man, Big Japan is one of those companies that you know once you've seen pretty much ten ten of their matches, you can't watch yeah. it. It's it's I so mean, repetitive. The, the violence yeah. competitive. They have the same matches. It's you know Abdullah Koyabashi, and uh, you know pretty much Jun Kasai, Jackie. Uh, I got a soft spot uh, for, for Kobayashi though. Yeah, so do I. But I mean, how many times can I can I see him wrestle? And and speaking, I mean, yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy he is wrestling again because he was gone because he got like Hep C, but apparently he's cured. Um, Wait, yeah, apparently he's back. I mean, dude, one of the things that is going on in New Japan, I mean, not New Japan, Big Japan, is uh, Sekimoto, um, but that's nothing to do with deathmatch wrestling, which is fine, because it doesn't have to be just deathmatch wrestling. Um, great wrestler. Awesome. Love watching him. Yeah. Uh, check out New Japan. I mean, Big Japan, goddamn. Uh, both, both Abdullahs have a hepatitis C. Yeah, but I, you know what? <laughs> I don't consider uh, Kobayashi a douchebag. Yeah, honestly, man, Abdul. I really love Abby, but dude, hands down, that was my favorite heel of all time. And then as I grew older, I just realized, like, you know, once you hear his interviews and stuff, you're like, eh. Well, that was yeah. me with New Jack when I was little, man. Yeah, I was like, this guy's really a shithead. I don't really care. Yep. Yeah, that was that was a disappointment. So that's why it rules to be a Terry Funk fan. Yeah, Terry Funk is awesome, man. Met him at a uh, House of Hardcore. Awesome. Great hell, man. Yeah, nice nice guy. Uh, Sabu is another guy that's 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 real nice if you catch him on a good day. Yeah, if you can yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You catch him in a good spot, nice as anything. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, but you know, honestly, I I understand why they get irritated, man. Going to these. I haven't gone recently, but you know, I, I used to go to the uh, conventions and uh, what was it called? Legends of the Ring um, in New Jersey. I forgot. I forgot what it was. Actually, Monroe, Monroe, New Jersey, uh, Legends of the Ring. And up there, man, you know, they of course, you know, the wrestlers, they go there. You see them, you know, half of them are, are in terrible shape. They're up there selling eight by tens and autographs. Clearly, if they're in that bad of shape and they're and they're coming to sell these autographs, they need the money. If you're up there, if you want to autograph, either pay or just, you know, stand around well, I mean, and buy whatever you're doing. But yeah. these, these fucking people, they wait until intermission, and they wait for the people to go to the bars next door, and they try to get free autographs from, from people. So I understand why people get irritated by wrestling fans. Oh, God, yeah. You know? I mean, it it's completely understandable, and that's, I mean, people give punk shit about that, but it's like, dude, really? Yeah. You're basically the hottest wrestler in the world, man, I mean... You want to act like a prick, he's going to be a prick to you, and you can't even get mad at that. And honestly, the whole thing with Punk that happened at that hockey at, at that hockey game, he said it himself on, on the podcast. He said the guy yeah. referred to him as Phil. Hey, Phil. Like, dude, you don't yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't call him Phil. He, you know him, see him Punk. Like, you know, know him? Hey, Terry. Yeah, Terry. You know, he's going to be like, what the fuck are you? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I, yeah. What what was what was the original Sheik's name? Uh, Farhad. Dude, there there's uh Sabu on Jericho's podcast. 
Uh, it's a pretty recent interview. I mean, if you've listened to a Sabu interview, which I'm sure you have, it's the same thing, but for those who haven't and want to listen to a, I mean, a, a, a good interview it is, it's Sabu and Jericho. It's a really, it's about an hour long. Uh, he mentions Ed Farhart, who is the uh, the original Sheik, and Sabu goes, who's Ed Farhart? Right. And it, was, it was so, so good, because he did it so casually. Like, I don't know who the fuck that is. Um... That, that I don't. He's, he's really good at doing that, you know? Oh, God, yeah. Well, I mean... Sarcastic and, and being so nonchalant about it. <sighs> good stuff. Yeah. Uh, That's an but, uh, guy, man. He's underground. What are you doing? Use Sabu. Why not? Yeah. It's not... Like, honestly, yeah. Bring him in. I don't see why... He, I wouldn't see why he wouldn't have a problem doing... Uh, a lot of people like doing Lucha Underground because it's one day a week and you're allowed to work in whatever uh, your other commitments, from what I've yep. read. I mean, if that's the case, great. Um, so that would be perfect for him. I mean, it's one day. Yeah. Plus, I mean, let's face it. I mean, how many more years do you think Sabu has as far as, yeah. you know, wrestling, uh, you know, being active? We were, saying this, we were saying this 10 years ago. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've seen him. I've seen him recently, man. You, you know his body's tearing down. It's. Oh, yeah. I give him maybe five more years. If, all you know. yeah, but all for our fucking enjoyment. So I can't get, I can't fault him. No, I love Sabu to death, man. Definitely, yeah. uh, definitely one of my favorites of all time. Um, but yeah, back back to goddamn NXT. What do I we have next? Say, great. I, okay, let's say we let's see. We covered the Owens thing. Great match. Great. They're letting them uh, do a lot of his moves from uh, the Independence. And let's hope C.J. Parker gets a little more length in his matches so we can actually have, form an opinion on him. Um, yeah. Now, let me say one thing about C.J. Parker. He uh, tweeted a picture of uh, a, a, a wound in his hand, which apparently, you know, he got cut when uh, he hit Steen. Okay. And I saw a lot of idiots online saying that, he, you know, Kevin Steen has a hard head. Now, clearly, I'm, I'm guessing it was Steen's teeth that cut the fucking guy. I don't think it was his forehead, so... Just want to clear that up for anybody that, that couldn't figure that out. Also, just a fun fact, it was really, really, I mean, I know it's his job and the rules, uh, but it was really funny seeing Drake Younger pull out gloves and being all careful around blood. Oh, dude, um, yeah. Yo, speaking of him, man, that's another fucking guy. Uh, Abdullah Kuyabashi, man, he he had a match with him where he fucking, you know, he did the uh, syringe. Yeah, yeah. No? Dude, like remembering those clips and seeing him on NXT as a ref is, is the it funniest me, thing ever. It makes me so happy. I'm like, yeah, it's so funny, man. It's it's it's. I love it. But uh, I actually, I wish he was a, he was an active wrestler. Yeah, I well, we never know. I mean, and the funny thing is, uh, a friend of mine, uh, who everyone should check out, James Figueredo, he does basically all the video work and editing for CZW. Um, posted an ad uh, of an interview with DJ Hyde from last week, and he was talking about how Drake Younger calls him on the regular, uh, you know, before every show, wishing him luck, or after every show, saying, you know, I uh, hope it went well, or it went well. But yeah. fun fact, they watched CZW, and uh, <laughs> he, like, called DJ Hyde to tell him that they were watching, like, Tangled Web 3 or whatever in, uh, like, a class with Dusty Rhodes, which really makes me happy about what's going on in NXT. That's that actually surprises me. That really surprised. That's probably the most surprising thing I've heard in wrestling in a long time. That <laughs> Ed's classrooms are playing Tangled Web Three, fucking CZW style. That's crazy. It makes perfect sense that it's uh, Dusty Rhodes class though, because who else would it be? Right, right. I love it, man. I love it. I have a. Uh... Yeah, I, I. He got to call the. Uh, let's. We'll jump into this one. He got to call the Ascension. Uh, Balor and Atami match too, which was. I love them, man. The entrance, everything. The dude. The pageantry. <laughs> like yeah. I mean, and people who want to write it off as a Jeff Hardy thing, because I'm sorry, there are smarts who feel the need to do that. Um, no, I feel anytime he does a paint job, he becomes the the character. It's like he that he's. Portraying, like I mean, that was different than anything he, in the like two matches that he's had in NXT. Um, yeah. Great, great match. Uh, I can't wait for the Ascension to get called up. 
which will hopefully be soon. Yeah, um, I'm guessing it's going to be soon. It has to be. It, it would be great if they get called up tomorrow night and beat whoever the beat. Is there a tag match tonight? Because I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be Miz Dow and uh, the Miz against the Usos. Okay, here you go. Usos win the titles. I want the Ascension to come up, run, run rough shot, win the titles. I know it can't be tomorrow night because they need a rematch, but that's what I want to see when the Ascension are called up. The, yeah. To prove that tag team wrestling can still be dominant. That's that's honestly what uh, Raw is missing, man, is, is, is the tag team division. And we have nothing. We have no. nothing. And see, one, of those, one of those tag teams is uh, fucking the, the Lucha Dragons, man. I, I like it. I'm digging it, man. Put it on Raw. I, seriously, you want, you want merch to sell. Yeah. Kids are going to want Kalisto ma masks. Exactly. And the guy can speak English. I know. It's Always a perfect. Boss. Exactly. There you go. Rey Mysterio once again. He, honestly, I think, and I know this is going to sound crazy, man. I can see Kalisto being better than Mysterio. I completely back that. Yeah, I can see that, man. Honestly, I mean, I Mysterio, as much as I love him, he... Same, same. Compared to what people can do in the ring today, he wouldn't be able to hold up to, to like Kalisto and, and those guys. Yeah. You know? I mean, I mean, if you had like Ray when he was, you know, what like eighteen, nineteen, and like ninety five, uh, and obviously I can get the age wrong there, but I mean, I'm sure he could hold up with him there. But oh yeah, yeah. I Back mean, they're both. I think they're both integrators in their styles of wrestling. It's just so. I mean, but you got to remember. This is almost 20 years later now. Right. And that's that's what I'm saying. Mean, if 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 a if a 19 year old Rey Mysterio was in 2014, it was when was being trained the way that Kalisto is. Of course, he could he could hold up with Kalisto. What I'm saying, yeah. The the the, the prime of Rey Mysterio probably has won't been. be able to you know stand in the ring with the prime of Kalisto, which he's not even in his prime yet. So you know that's what I'm saying. As yeah. far as just ring, I'm not talking about promos. I'm not talking about merch sales. I, yeah, no, no, I'm just talking ring, just ring work. I completely agree. Um, just, I can't wait till Kalisto and if if Hunico gets to come back up too, awesome, 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 because yeah. he's a really talented wrestler who can also speak English. Exactly. Um, God damn it, WWE! Come on, man. It's it's like I mean, come on, dude. Like that, Mark. Masks will sell to people. Right. Like, I mean, and Kalisto, it's even more interesting because he's so small. Right. I mean, I'm glad I got to see him the few times I got to see him on the Indies, man. He puts on good matches. Yep. Even against Mil Mascaris. Yep. And that... <laughs> Pro Wrestling Syndicate. There you go. Yeah, it was uh, the show with Muda on it. Um, Sammy Callahan. Uh, yep, Sammy Callahan and Tony Nese versus Kai and uh, Muda. Great match. Great match. Yeah. Awesome stuff. That's another guy, man. Tony Nese. Why the fuck is he not being called up? I mean, I don't know, man. He quit TNA. That he quit TNA so he could do that PWS show. Really? That's what I heard. That's crazy. I believe it. Uh, yeah, well, wouldn't, um, I mean, TNA it wouldn't surprise me. He, it's great seeing him. He's on like every house of hardcore that's been through Philly. I don't know if he was on the the last one. I don't think he was. Uh, um, he he was actually. Oh, good. Awesome, then. Even better. I'm trying to remember what match it was, but he, he was. I remember he was. The dude is so was incredibly actually. strong. Yeah, he is. He is. I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's not a bad-looking guy. They can, they can push him. You know, he, he's got no, that, no, he, that he looks you know, like an, protocol. If you know what a wrestler's supposed to look like, you know, and I'm doing air quotes, um, right. he definitely fits that mold, for sure. There you go, man. He can, he can be your uh, next John Cena, Vince McMahon. Except better, probably. You know, oh. in ring, at least in ring. I don't, I don't know about promos in ring. I'm sure he's he's uh not. I'm sure I know for a fact he's better than Cena. So, but uh, which um, one was last time? House of Hardcore Seven, right? I'm trying to see if he was the, on there. The, the last one. That yeah, was the last one. Yeah. Seven. And they're coming but, back uh, in what? Uh, they're coming back in the not too distant future. Uh, yeah. March. Yeah. Dude, yeah. yo, uh, Rumble Weekend's gonna be awesome, man. Fucking, uh, Chikara's during the day, Ring of Honor's, uh, I'm talking about the Saturday. Chikara's Saturday, or Sunday, I'm not positive, sorry. 
but during the afternoon, there's a Ring of Honor show Saturday night, and then the Rumble on Sunday. Good That's wrestling weekend in Philadelphia for all those coming in, who, people who are coming down to the Rumble, if that's the case. And once we get some more, from, some more information, I'll, uh, I'll update it on the podcast and tell everybody, you know, exact dates and, you know, when the show is and where you can get and take. Bo- I, I can tell you both of those shows are the, tw- uh, the 2300 Arena, a.k.a. the ECW Arena. Awesome. That I do know. Even um, better. Yeah, so no one has to trek out to the Armory. Um, oh. I, I, dude, I like the armory. I like it too. It's gigantic. It, there's not, ba- there isn't a bad seat. It's, it's not, I mean, not even it's, it's, for for tailgate, man. It was, it was fucking awesome. That's, for that's because no one cares. Yeah, I mean, well, trust me, no one cares around around right. the arena right. either. No but um, it's still in a neighborhood, you know, it's it doesn't have that feeling as 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 the uh, armory. The armory, you you know, you're caged in. It's in, you're fenced in. It's you know it's it's isolated from 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 communities you know so it's it's yeah. feel more safe than whatever but uh yeah for tailgating definitely uh the armory is better but you know for just you know just just being the arena it's of course better so it is what I'm happy man I, I, can't, I can't wait to see it completely finished because it wasn't completely finished when I went to that lucha show yeah, yeah. um I'm really uh, I can't wait till Rumble either. Let's get that out of the way, dude. I'm, that that'll be just a fun tailgating day anyway. Yeah, I'll be there, man. Oh God, yeah, me too, man. I'm I'm I I know at least five people going. So yeah, man. I'll, yeah. I'll be, me and uh, me and Steve are gonna be up there trying to go tailgating early so we can get nice and uh nice and refreshed for the Rumble. Like I mean. Put it this way, man. That's gonna. I uh, will all say it now. I think it's going. I think it's going to be an interesting night. Oh yeah. I, I think we're gonna get some big surprises. I hope so. I hope it's stuff that none of us see coming, or in a good way. I mean, not not to not to be egotistical about our our city and and say you know Philly crowds are the best crowds, but they they know what they're walking into. You know, yeah, they, exactly. They know the fucking Philly crowd is the ECW crowd. They know that. We're the ones that they're not going to be able to pull some bullshit on and have fucking, you know, Cena win the Rumble or, you know, something like that. They're not going to be able to do yeah. that stuff. I think it's going to be going towards a good direction. I think we're going to get a surprise or two. Um, I'm excited, man. Honestly. Me too, man. Me too. Can't wait. But uh, speaking of the Rumble, I saw uh, I saw this. I saw some people tweeting this out. And uh, I guess it's – it's, hold on. The Twitter, the Twitter handle is at – WWE he rises, and he says that he's going to be uh, coming back at the Rumble. Who the hell do you think this is? I do not know. I'm hoping, and, and a lot of people are guessing this, so I'm hoping there's no truth to this, but people are guessing that it's going to be Masked Kane. <sighs> that is so I know, right? That's such a... Terrible surprise. I that's another thing, man. I just hope they don't do that in Philly because that's gonna get booed. Yes, it will. That's gonna get booed, man. I mean, I I don't know, man. I oh, don't. Um, fun fact to add to Ring of Honor, though he's not advertised for Philadelphia, but um, Alberto Del Rio signing on to Ring of Honor for shows in January and February. Yeah, definitely, man. I'm excited. A lot of people say that uh, he's not gonna be able to keep up. I think he will because watching. I think he will. Yeah. Yeah, watching him with those uh those matches that he had with uh Ziggler. Good st- dude, yeah. instant chemistry with those two. Awesome man, man. I can see that in, in in Ring of Honor. I I had nothing against his wrestling ability whatsoever. Neither did I. Nope. It's honestly, I mean, uh, no, you could take off my head with this, but I feel the same way with Sheamus. I don't question his wrestling ability at all. I don't either. I just don't like him because he's so stale now, and it's just exactly. I mean, and it's only what they give him to work with. I mean, I mean, if 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 Sheamus went on the Indies and he got fired by the WWE, I'd be excited because I'd I'd oh, want yeah. a match between him and like Tony Nese. You know, match. I would say like, you know, PWS would snag him up. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just they're so stale, man. Yeah, but TNA, yeah, they they would, but it's I don't know, man. They're just stale. Maybe if he turns heel, it'll add some excitement. You know, see that's the thing. When I I wasn't watching, I didn't get to. I never got to see a heel Sheamus, so I I'd be into seeing that. Um, I didn't either, actually. Yeah, because I, I wasn't in at the time. 
Yeah, I stopped watching for years, so. Yep, same. Yeah, right around, I think 2002 was the last show that I watched, and then, uh... Oh, yeah, no, we have, like, the same, basically the same thing, and then I came back, I came around, uh, like, the beginning to middle of 2011. Yeah, I came in, uh, 2012. Yeah, so. Right around the same. I watched a show here and there, but I definitely didn't watch it on a weekly basis at all. So I missed a lot of stuff, and I'm glad I missed a lot of stuff because apparently a lot of bad shit went down that I didn't want to see. So I, I pretty much missed the whole well, scene. I mean, of the- 2011, The Miz was the number one wrestler in the PWI 500. There you go. That I missed that, and I'm so happy I missed that because... I asked every friend who's stuck with it forever, and I said, did I... M- was 2011 such a boring year that Miz was the top wrestler? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you, you didn't miss much. I bet. I bet. With, uh, yeah, I mean, Miz is no... Fuck, man. That's bad. I just, I'm sorry. And I love it, though. Rio didn't like him at all. I don't think anybody does. Honestly, yeah, you, who's, who's bigged up the Miz? I still don't get... I mean... One the best thing to come out of 2011, obviously, is you know Punk winning the title, but right. Um, I do not understand that the. I know we're supposed to hate him, and yeah, I do when he comes out, but yeah, whew. it's it's not the right kind of hate. It's like the I'm not interested in you at all type of hate. Right. It's, it's like I don't even want to see you get your ass kicked. I just don't want to see you at all. Exactly. Big, big I don't hate him on commentary. I'd be lying if I said I did. I just don't want to see him. I, I don't know about commentary. Maybe, yeah, he's probably actually good at that. Actually, speaking of a sad note, Corey Graves have, uh, retiring. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's he's doing the commentary for NXT. Great on it. I loved him. Thought he was great on it. Damn, I think I think he's 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 pretty decent, man. Uh, bringing fun facts up that, uh, like, the other people don't, like talking about uh, Tensai, Albert, whatever you want to call him. Right. I heard the stories from him that uh, Finn Balor has done the paint, and it means a lot to him. And so, like saying shit like that, no one else is saying that. And right. I really, I'm like, all right, cool, I dig this. Yeah, all right. it's a shame, man. Uh, I liked his ring work, and I, uh, I, I thought he was good talking, uh, good character. Just a drag. He's uh. He he won't be able. He, I mean, I I think it's hilarious that you know like Triple H's health is first, and then you got Punk talking about you know here's a Z pack. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I, I guess he's been uh, concussed too many times, but yeah. And I mean that's scary. I mean yeah. So what's not? I mean that you don't want that. I mean that I'm I'm always worried that's going to happen to Dolph Ziggler. Like it's going to be the last one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, man, he takes a lot of fucking bumps in. Well, dude, him and, and I'm scared for Rollins, too, man, because they're both out to prove so much, and they're both masters of selling, and the, and like you said, uh, and you can say they both took these crazy bumps. They take these crazy bumps. Yeah, but, but Rollins, I don't know, dude. It, it just seems like Ziggler. He takes more, like, uh, face bumps and... He just, he, I don't know, man. With he Ziggler, takes a lot of the shots to the head. Right. It it looks so much more dangerous. With 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 Rollins, he's diving onto people. He's falling on his back. He's doing things like that more often than uh, you know, just just taking crazy DDTs like you know, face first and all this crazy shit. Right. But uh, yeah, Ziggler, man, that guy. I mean, can you can you imagine Ziggler on the fucking Indies one day, man? I mean, that guy against fucking like. Ah, man, I don't know. The funny thing is, he's the type of wrestler, and I mean, I could be completely off, I kind of don't see him do, like, once he's done with WWE, I could see him being done. Yeah, I I don't think, I don't think he would, see, guys that start out in the WWE, I don't think too many of them step down to the indies, unless they're, like, legends, and they come in for autographs, and you know, guys like Honky Tonk Man and, and shit like that. But I mean, he seems like he seems like he's more focused on his own. Like he seems like he'd be like, because I know he does his um, comedy, like stand up yeah. and shit. He seems like he'd be the type of like, all right, later. Yeah. Plus, I mean, he's he's the type of guy that I can see getting into 
you know, like sitcoms and, and shit like that. Something. And I wish him all the best because I think he's good at what he does. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, I don't, I don't see the guy coming to, you know, PWS and, and Ring of Honor. Um, no, neither do never I. Say, never say never, but neither do I. Yeah. But uh, NXT, definitely uh, Finn Balor, you know, the, the entrance was... Uh-huh. Dude, a Tommy getting all of us with setting up for the GTS. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you uh, think they're gonna bring that back? I think he is. They, I mean, they might as well, man. I mean, the whole thing with Punk is done. Yeah, I mean, it's been aired out. You know, you're he's gone. This is why he's gone. Bye. Yeah. All right. With he's with your competition, whether you wanna. You know, refer to them as or, or recognize them as as, as your yeah, fucking competition. You admit that they're not, like they're not the same thing at all. It's gonna be dangerous. Blah blah blah. Right. So but he's gonna get all of us to watch it. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. I th- I think uh, Finn, man, his his entrance is awesome. I don't. I don't like you said. I don't see any. I mean, I see the resemblance, but it's it's not the same thing as as Jeff. No, no. This wasn't something that I. This was something that people were arguing on. And I just went, I completely agreed with the person saying, no, I think they're two completely different entities. Right. Um, no, and, and nothing against Jeff Hardy either, I mean. No, dude. but see, Jeff Hardy, he just paints a bunch of random patterns and, and shit. Yeah, yeah. He's, and I mean, and it, is, is it tight? Yeah. Does it look neat? Yeah, sure. Right. Um, but Finn, but he, I, on the character, like you said, man, I mean, I've seen him uh, do the Joker gimmick, and, you know, he was acting like the Joker. You know? Yeah, and uh, like same. Yeah, like I was watching the match when he did Hannibal Lecter. Right. He came out like yeah, exactly. He came out with the fucking strap ons, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Strapped in, you know. He <laughs> came out with the strap on. What? Hey, another thing. What's up with with fucking strap ons in, in hardcore matches now? I don't know. I who started that shit? I have not noticed. They gotta stop doing that, dude. I, I had tournament I of death. At tournament. Oh, wait, of was death. that again? Was that Lucky 13? Yeah, it was. But, man, you don't know how many fucking grown-ass men were walking around with dildos and strap-ons in, in there. Like, it was just ridiculous, man. It, it, it was it was a sight, man. I don't know. But, yeah. Yeah, he came strapped in on, on the fucking, uh, on the bed and everything. Yeah, his, his entrances are awesome. I love it, man. Um, and the Tommy, too, man, I don't think he's going to get, like, Overshadowed by Balor, um, uh, I, God, they say the future is bright, and it really fucking is, man. Yeah, yeah, it is. With uh, another guy coming up, Sammy Callahan. You know, they they add him to that group of guys, and fuck yeah, man. You already got yeah, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, Ziggler, mm-hmm. Cesaro, Brian, all these guys, and add those five, six guys to that. I'm it's happy. a matter of time, but wait till they sign Adam Cole. Yeah, I mean, they've passed on him a few times, but that's another guy that I'm they surprised passed, they passed on. They've they passed on Steen before. Yeah, but Steen, I can understand, because he's not the, you know, stereotype. Yeah, the typical, but no, he, yeah, meanwhile, yeah, he's, he is, like, I mean, Nice and Adam Cole are what wrestlers are, again, air quotes, supposed to look like. Right. Yeah, Adam Cole, I mean, he may not be huge, but... He looks like the type of guy that WWE wants, so that kind of surprised me. I mean, it's weird that, that we're still arguing this. Um, you know, like how Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels were the... They weren't what wrestlers are supposed to look like. They're small. And then they're like, okay. But now we're still talking about that with dudes like Punk and Brian. They're smaller guys. but So we that shouldn't matter. I really wish Vince McMahon would get his heart on off about... You know, big equals bucks, you know, nothing against Roman Reigns, but I mean Yeah. In the world. That is that is true, man. But one thing I'll tell you what though. One thing wrestling is lacking as far as big guys is is, is like fat guys, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I I think there needs to be more like big fat wrestlers, man. I I dig it. I liked it in the nineties, man. Guys like, you know, King Kong, Bundy, Bam Bam, Bigelow, one man gang. Why not have more of those guys? Vader yeah, Vader, man. That, awesome, man. You guys were all fucking awesome. That's because, uh, I mean, that's because, you know, I'm not the biggest King Kong Bundy mark, but I mean, four out of five could really, they, they were anomalies, dude. They could put on really good matches. Yeah. I mean, they, 
they messed up with when they brought back uh, Jason Albert, um, but everyone watch his stuff, Giant Bernard in New Japan. You will yeah. not be disappointed. Yeah, I mean, hands down, honestly, dude, one of the one of the most underrated wrestlers, Bam Bam Bigelow. One of my all-time favorites. Fucking great, you know? Yep. Need more guys like that, man. I just, I don't get it. I mean, they had a guy like Brodus Clay. That's that's one of those type of guys. But then they made a fucking, you know, funky dinosaur out of him. Right? The thing is, they, well, they had him down in NXT, and he was pissed off and shit. Right. Like his character, and that's fine. But then they let him go. I'm like, okay, we're finally getting the, the heel Brodus Clay, which is what we needed. Right. And then he was gone. That's what he's made. Honestly, man, it seems like a fucking rib. It just seems like a huge, just long two-year run of a rib. Could be. This guy just fucking dancing around like an idiot. Like, they, they can't be serious. I mean, nobody... You can't sell that to me, man. You can't tell me somebody actually came up with this idea that, hey, dance around like a moron when you have, you know, no rhythm at all or anything and just, just go out there in this fucking tight-ass outfit that we're going to give you and just, just look like an idiot out there. When you have so much potential to look like a fucking monster, you know the guy. Yeah, see, I have not seen him in TNA at all. I haven't watched anything. Well, they actually brought him out as a as a monster, but then they jobbed him out. Ugh. You know, you know. That's well, hopefully, they take their heads out of their asses. Yeah, they, they brought him out. They made him look good. He was. Uh, he came out with a uh, EC3. You know, he was his bodyguard, which made sense. He was Snoop Dogg's bodyguard, so you know, give him that gimmick. That's what he was. So, you know, he came out, it was fine the first week or two, and then he started losing. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, there goes... Well, I mean, they're talking about completely, like, flipping the script with uh, TNA, so let's see what happens come January. I hope so, man. I mean, God, I'm really happy he did get, uh, they did get picked up by someone. Yeah, so, I mean, I knew they were going to get picked up by somebody. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's a channel like mostly everybody gets. Yeah, which is good. Uh, but, uh, Destination America, FYI. For anybody that doesn't know yet, TNA will be on Destination America in January, Friday nights. The debut is going to be on, on, on a Wednesday. It's going to be a lot. Oh, it's going to be on Friday nights, though. Yeah, it's going to be on Friday wow, nights. Cool. cool. I'm actually into that. Yeah, which I, I probably won't be able to watch it live every Friday. Um, but, yeah, you know. n neither will I, but I mean, I don't, I'm so, uh, dude, I'm a wrestling fan, I don't have a huge social life, are you kidding me? Well, I, I try to go out as, as much as I can, but, uh, just, you know. Why do I go out? Wrestling's on. <laughs> yeah, well, um, that's what yours are for, man. Yeah, yeah. That's what yours are for. That's dude, what I, do, I, can wait, I cannot wait for Wrestle Kingdom, man. It is going to be. Yeah, no, I know. Last time, last time you were on here, you were talking about uh, Hulu Plus, right? Yeah. I recently purchased uh, Hulu Plus. Sell me on something on, on Hulu Plus because I can't find shit, dude. What? Uh, just anything wise? Anything, anything that makes that thing. I mean, I already have Netflix, so you know. Well, dude, come on, the hour and a half raw. It cuts out all the bullshit. Is that the, is that the only thing? Because I mean, no, I mean, I well, it's like. And well, I mean, it's like you have if you have cable too, but I mean, it, it's kind of not pointless, but kind of. Um, uh, yeah, like that's that's the thing. I already have cable, so it's like I already can see these shows. It's like I mean, no, well, there's a lot of old shows on there and shit. I mean, like the show Erie, Indiana, from when I was a little kid, is on there. Which is is, is cool there like random? Uh, yeah, is there like random stuff like that one? Oh yeah, for sure. You just gotta look around, man. Yeah. I mean, it's I just. It, it's something you just gotta walk around through. Yeah, I was I was trying to search for uh, Lucha Underground, and I came across uh, it was a Lucha show. I think it was called uh, Lucha USA. And, yeah, uh, yeah. That shit was all right, man. I guess they they actually had the Headhunters on there, which uh, huh? I'm looked out for because you know. Yeah, yeah. Several wrestlers, but uh, yeah, like Psychosis was up there, and you know, just a bunch of other guys. But um. Back to NXT for the ninth time. Yeah, keep it going. Yeah, fucking, uh, we had the Lucha Dragons against the uh, Vaude Villains. And they great titles. Yeah. Great match. I was surprised, uh, the Vaude Villains didn't, uh, lose the titles. I mean, yeah. didn't win the titles, I should say. 
I love their entrance, man. It's so fucking. It's it's awesome. It's different, man. It's it's definitely something unique. You know, it stands out. That's what you want. You hear my dog snore? Yeah, dude. Yeah. I thought that was a weird burp. No, 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 no. That's just my dog snoring in the back. But uh, um, yeah, really good match. Um, I can't wait to uh, the past couple weeks have real. It didn't take long, but I mean, have really sold me on. Uh, the bald villains. I I really do dig the gimmick. Everyone was right. It's it's inter- It's good. Um, do you think it's gonna make it to the main roster though? I don't know, man. That's what I'm worried about with everybody. Yeah, I I really don't know if that's gonna you know translate on a on a on a bigger uh, platform. If any, I mean, they're gonna be a comedy gimmick. I mean, I don't expect them to do yeah, much. I mean, but they're a comedy gimmick, but. They're also putting on unreal matches. Like, I mean, really good matches. And more importantly, really good tag team matches. Right. That's what I'm saying, man. Ascension, Lucha Dragons, you know, the Vaude Villains. Just bring them all up, man. You guys fucking need them. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. It's we get... like, uh, dude, the Ascension just, it just comes off like a 1980s tag team, and there's nothing wrong with that. No, I love it, man. I mean, that's 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 what I uh, pretty much like, you know, '80s and '90s wrestling. It's my shit. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 really good stuff. Yeah. It's um. My shit. Early 2000s. Yeah. That's about it, man. A- Any time forward from there. Yeah. Well, that that was the drag. After that, I mean, there's stuff, but there yeah. isn't really. Yeah. Um. What was next? Uh, Charlotte and uh. Sasha Banks was that the match? Yeah, I mean, I I heard everybody raving about this match. I thought it was all right. I mean, it... uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'd be lying if I, I I wasn't glued to it. But I was also, I mean, two hours is a lot. But I was I I I got up for a second. I yeah, don't look at it as a divas match where I'm getting up to take a piss automatically. But dude, if anybody listens to this show, everybody knows if if you listen to this weekly. I can't review the divas matches because I'm taking a piss or walking the dogs. It just I can't get into it. I'm sorry. Well, I, I mean, it was nothing against Paige and AJ. It's just it was done to death. Dude, I, I, I mean, I'm not sexist, man. I just, I don't, I can't get into it. I can't get into women's wrestling. Never have. I don't, don't care. Care. I don't care if it's Christina Von Eri. I don't, I don't. It doesn't matter to me. Just can't get into it. What so else that, do you? What else do you think, Kurt Henning? Tell me more. <laughs> so. Yeah, I I tend to tune out on uh during the divas matches, but let's see. Um, we had I mean, uh Baron Baron what's his name? Baron, Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin. There you go. That guy had a squash match against uh. Yeah, but it, he had the awesome stare down with Bull Dempsey, who I w- really do like seeing wrestle. Um, I think. Dude. I haven't seen. I've only seen him one time, and I didn't really think much of him. I think I I think it's gonna it'll be interesting for sure. Yeah, I I don't want to really form an opinion of him because I like I said I only watched one match so. But, I uh, think those two will be interesting. Yeah, this uh, Baron Corbin guy though, man. I mean, if he's Mine's good in the horrible promo videos of him on like that motorcycle and shit. Um, I have not seen those, but if they, if they make him a badass or a fucking big ass huge monster guy, yeah, you know I'm 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 sold, man. You know they, he's well, I mean that's kind of what it is. I mean, dude, he's dude, he's fucking built like a brick shit house. He's fucking like eight feet tall for Christ's sakes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and and like you said, but I mean, I'm I'm interested to see more for sure. Um. Now, do you so think- that'll be- do you think a gimmick like like the Undertaker or, or Kane or one of those like you know really gimmicky gimmicks? Do you think one of those gimmicks would get over nowadays? Closest thing is uh, Bray Wyatt. True. My. If 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 they give something like that to this guy, that mm. see that's that's something I would I would like, man. I like I like big fucking guys that are just just fucking weird, you know? Yeah. We haven't had um, one. Years. Well, that's why. I mean, again, that's another reason why why it was such a breath of fresh air. Even though people complain, and yes, people complain that 
His promos are all the same, which is completely not true if you're actually watching. Um, his matches are the same. They're not if you're actually watching. Um, I think... They don't give I him much to work Exactly. I mean, what do you... I mean, they give him good people to work with. It's just his... The feuds aren't built, you know? It's just him doing a promo that most people don't understand. Like, you know, a couple weeks ago, his, his reference to, you know... He didn't say it, but, you know, the Jacob's Ladder, the movie and all that stuff, and the demons, I and mean, people don't get it, you know, so... Uh, That's you know, their so, fault. Yeah, a lot, to a lot of people, it's, it's, it's fucking boring. I, I, I kind of get it, but, you know, yeah, just yeah. give him more stuff to do, man. You know, just having him do a promo and, and, you know, Dean Ambrose attacks him and then... You know, that's it for two weeks, and they do recaps, and that's it. Like, you know, I, that's I don't the thing, man. Yeah. On paper, and how they've been in the ring. Um, honestly, like Wyatt and Ambrose, fuck yes, you you take my money. Um, I think t I really think tonight's gonna be interesting. I I really hope I'm not proven wrong. Um, no, I think it's gonna be good, man. I think they're actually gonna steal the show, hands down. They have to. I mean, cause I think that now, and if there's a close second, it'll be Ziggler and Harper. Yeah, I, I really think the Seth Rollins and John Cena match is going to be a letdown. It is, and I'm sorry, it's it's only because it's tables it, match. Yeah, and it's John Cena, and it's, I'm I'm sorry, dude. It's like <laughs> yeah, but like, even even if it was a different stipulation, man. I mean, the tables match is. Really fucking boring, because you know just for the simple fact that as soon as somebody goes to the table, it's that's it. So you really can't yeah. have a great, you know. It's I don't know, and that's gonna main event, so it's gonna be an awkward ending. Really, it's just a guy going through a table, and it's like, all right, folks, well, there there goes TLC S. You know, it's, I don't know. Have a good one. Yeah. I actually wish the the fucking Bray Wyatt and, and Dean Ambrose match would main event because it, it would make sense. I mean, it oh, has to. It, you mean because it's a TLC match? Right. <laughs> it, it doesn't make you know. That's but, crazy. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's crazy, right? It, but yeah, I guess I guess they don't get it. But keep those ideas to yourself, dude. Yeah, I know. You're welcome, WWE. Don't go bring ahead. that to this podcast. It's not welcome here. There you go, man. But uh, what other matches do we have on, on, on the NXT other than the main event? I think that's it, right? I think so. Yeah, I, I'm going to feel like an asshole. For this. One sec. Just do a double check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. But let's, let's go ahead and talk about the main event. Yeah, Sammy, no, Sammy Zayn against Adrian Neville. Dude, hands down, like a, like a four and a half out of fucking five star match. I mean... If not five out of five, they hit every spot. Everything, you know, the chemistry was there. No botches. Everything was good. You know, good selling. Yep. Everything had good momentum, and it, you know, the the story that was told was was fantastic. The build was good. I mean, this feud was probably one of the most properly, you know, built feuds in in, in the last year. You know, honestly, in, in yeah. Wrestling period. Um, wrestling period. I'm not just saying NXT. Because these guys have been feuding for months, this has been building up, and it makes sense. Now it's now now they now they now, now it's the blow up match, you know. So and I it, made, it, it it ruled on so many levels, um, because it took Sami Zayn to places we haven't seen him before, like where he's getting angry, he's not brushing things off, right? Um, and it was even better because we're getting to see Adrian Neville fucking be the cocky prick that he should be, right. Um, because you're like, all right, dude, he does high spots, and um, and you can't. No, he can be a fucking prick. And you're like, fuck, I hate that dude. Like, fuck you, dude. You know, saying this dude can't get the job done. Fuck you. What? Just because you want fuck off, and you right. want to see them have this match. And it, like you said, dude, it delivered on all points. Um, I agree with a friend of mine. Uh, I was more pumped for that than I was for Mania. Yeah, I mean, for, for last year's Mania? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I would say that, but it's it's right up there. I would understand why you would say that, though, because yeah. that, was, that was a hell of a show, man. I mean... Honestly, Mania last year, the only disappointment that, that I had really was, was the Shield match. I think they, that was really a letdown. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just having these guys pretty much be the most dominant fucking 
thing in wrestling, and then you give them the New Age Outlaws and, and Corporate Kane in like a five minute mm-hmm. match. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Bad, bad stuff. But, uh, yeah, we had the fucking main event, man. Everything was awesome. You know, fantastic match. Sami Zayn, new NXT champion. We had, uh, Kevin, Stan, uh, Kevin Owens, whatever you want to call him. I, I, that's going to be hard getting Kevin Steen out of my mind. I know, I know. It's, and I, I, I really try not to say, like, Devitt or... Right, right. I don't want to come off as, like, one of those fucking indie marks. Like, oh, let's, you know, let's yeah. fucking, uh, you know, yeah, that's Pac. That's not Adrian Neville, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's going to take some time, so for you fucking WWE lovers, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to say Kevin Steen here and there. It slips out. But, yeah, Kevin Owens came out. Hug this friend, which I appreciated, man, because they. I really did too, man. Yeah, I appreciated. They actually, they didn't, they didn't say it, but they took note that you know these guys have prior match. Um, you know, I, I don't know who, I don't know who said it on the announce team, but they're like, you know, his friend Kevin Owens, blah blah blah. And I'm like, cool, cool. And I mean, other people saw it coming, and I mean, in the back of my head, I did, but caught me fucking off guard, and I was like, fuck. All right. Yeah. Um, awesome, and then uh, there was <laughs> there was so much love in that in that hug, man, that he, he busted himself open again. If you saw that, it's like, dude, he and he got the best part. Obviously, besides him attacking Zane, was him walking right by Regal and Regal selling it. Like, what is that? That wasn't supposed to ha- like put it off. Like, this wasn't supposed to happen. What are you doing? The whole shebang. Um, it was really, I was really into it, and yeah, he actually he did a promo that that they put on YouTube, which was uh which was awesome, man. Regal, did, you know, at his best. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, dude, he's perfect for NXT. I mean, that's because he's one of the most underrated wrestlers. Yeah, plus um, he understands that he appreciates the the craft of wrestling. You know, he gets it. Yeah, all. The, every style of it because he's wrestled every style. He came from the um, fucking carnival era. I mean, yeah, I know, dude. I mean, like the 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 catch is catch can the uh, like wrestling in Japan, wrestling in Africa. I mean, any essentially, dude, like anywhere on the map. Because I mean, he's like he, like Rey Mysterio. He's been doing this since he was like fifteen. Right. Um, there's a really, really good match. It's him versus Muda from, like, 93. It's on, like, some collection I have. Um, he's just a an all-around good dude. And you're, like, perfect fit like for NXT uh, general good manager. Perfect, perfect fit. Yeah. Um, get, get rid of fucking, you know, Hugh Morris and shit, man. I mean, I respect the guy, but I hate how fucking cocky he is. Like, when I see the footage of him and he's like, you know... He really oh, acts you mean, like. You mean uh, where all the dudes are like trying out, and one of those dudes is Rich Swan? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying, dude, man. Dude, one of those dudes who gets like some camera yeah. time. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I used to be a fan of Hugh Morris, man. I mean, but you know, seeing footage of this guy being so cocky, like, yeah. He, you know, I'm not taking anything away from the guy. He had a position in WCW for a long time, but he never, he was never a main eventer. He never really did shit. Yeah, you know? but you know what? He can tell people how to, I mean, do this because you know what? It didn't work for me. And, you know, or, you know, learn from his mistakes or not his mistakes, but like his disadvantages, like that maybe he didn't get a push somewhere. It's like, you know, I mean. Yeah, but, but I mean, I, how Guys in the business can do that. You can get Prince Ikea to do that shit. Here's the thing. Has he steered us wrong? No, because look at everybody that's on NXT. That's true, but... Yeah, but then... He's, then he's, again, he's like the fucking head trainer there, correct? I think so. I believe so, but... T- if take that's the case, dude, don't go nowhere because you're not pissing me off. Yeah, but take a look at it, though. I mean, the the top guys in NXT, right... They're not mm. under Hugh Morris. They're just picked up, you know. They're not built in the WWE. Uh, you know, Finn, fucking uh, Hideo Itami, you yeah. know, Kevin Owens, fucking uh, Sami Zayn, Adrian Neville, all these guys, you know, Sammy Callahan, whatever his name is in NXT, something, Pro, Solomon Crow. Solomon Those Pro, guys yeah. 
I mean, those those are the top guys that we look forward to seeing, and they're he's, they're not built under you know he Morris. They're not really trained by the guy. They're just well, built in my image. Yeah, I don't know, man. But Sammy Callahan, man, I'm really looking forward to him coming up because I think he were at, at the House of Hardcore show where he, where he had uh, one of his last matches against MVP, and that, that was awesome. match, dude, stiff as fuck too. That yeah, was awesome. weird. It reminded man. me of a Japan match, dude. I mean, it, it was it was Japan style. Oh, for sure. certain. Yeah, I love that man. For anybody, go check that out. It was a House of Hardcore dude. two, I believe. I think maybe even one. I don't know. I think it was one. Yeah, House of Hardcore one. Um. Awesome, awesome show, man. They had the Young Bucks against uh, Paul London and uh, what's his name? Brian Kendrick. Brian, the Brian Kendrick. My mistake. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, good show, man. But, yeah, yeah. NXT, hands down, one of my favorite shows this year, if not my favorite. Um, awesome shit, man. Completely uh, great, great, great fucking show. Now, before, before we go ahead and... Uh, Pre TLC, real quick. Did you watch Ring of Honor? No. Uh, no. From last week, no. I've not got a chance yet. Dude, check check that out, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm. I'm I really, I really do want to give it a go. Check um, it. It's. It was. A, it was a great show. Not a. Not a bad match on that card. Oh, uh, that's another dude who I think in within the next year or two will get called uh, ACH. Yeah. I mean, I can see him. Yeah. Dude, I mean, like when I was like when I first saw him, dude, I'm like, holy shit, dude, that's like the second coming of Two Cold Scorpio. Yeah. Um, well, there's a, there's a lot of guys like that. I mean, Ar Fox, you know, fucking uh, yeah, just, Swan, like you said, uh, yeah, and Swan, Swan's putting his you know foot in the door. The only bad thing about Swan is his is his looks, man. He doesn't carry himself like a he, you know, I hate to say it, he looks he looks like a homeless guy, you know. Rich Swan, if you're listening, I don't agree. Well, I'm saying it. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I don't. Um, know. Just, I don't know. Maybe better in ring gear or something. I don't know, man. Something to stand out. Oh yeah, I mean, because oh, you know, Fox, like he, he carries himself like like you know something different. But uh, yeah. Rich, on, I don't know, man. Ricochet, you know, he's he's different. Oh, uh, dude, he, he, fucking guy. Two, uh, two, two years or less for sure, in my opinion. You think so? Yep. Dude, he's so young, and he is so talented. Yeah, and he, he, you know, everybody just says that he does, you know, the flippity doos and shit. But you know, this guy's, he's been in Japan, dude. He's been all over the states. He's he he won the Super college. Juniors tournament. He right. Won, he won Battle of Los Angeles, correct? Uh, this year. Uh, I so. Please. Yeah, no, he's not a spot monkey. Uh, he's fucking twenty-four. And he is unbelievable. Now I'll tell you what: if he is a spot monkey, it's it's, it's because he's doing like the PWG shows. Yeah, those, those he'll, he'll do more spots. But if you catch him on like a, you know, on a, on a different type of show, it's 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 not so many just flips and all that type of shit. No, but like honestly, watch his stuff in in New Japan. Yeah. Uh, like definitely. But um, like his matches against Ibushi are. Unbelievable! It's unbelievable this year. Yeah, uh, worth checking out. Anybody? It's stuff on Lucha Underground. If you guys didn't know, uh, you know Ricochet is is Prince Bruno. So. Yep. It's yeah. right. like fuck. That guy's really good. Yeah. Well, there you go. Ricochet. You are correct. Yeah, and and WWE better pick him up, man, because you know the value's going up. You know he's he's been working in New Japan. He's he's been working the states more. I mean, bigger. You shows. know, maybe. I mean, honestly, I could see him. It, it, I don't know if definitely, but I could see him doing a Devitt style thing. I mean, he could go there for a couple of years, and I mean, he's so young. I mean, he has all the time in the world. Imagine him and AJ Styles in New Japan. On well, they had a oh, where did they have a they had a match this year? Did not they? In, not in New Japan. Um, I thought I thought it was AJ against uh, AR Fox. Uh, uh, where was it? Uh, it was House of Glory Wrestling, up in New York. I gotta, I gotta check that out then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I gotta check that out. Yep, Ricochet versus AJ Styles, the phenomenal showdown. 
Another uh, random match that... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no. That hasn't happened yet. It is happening this Friday. Oh, shit. All this right. Friday. Um, Damn, I wish I lived in New York then. Yeah, uh, gonna be a good show. Um, Damn, man, we, we've been getting a lot of good wrestling recently. I mean, as far as, you know, non-WWE. It's because TNA was stupid enough to let AJ Styles go. I mean, not, not only that, I mean... Well, you haven't seen. I can't really talk about it. You haven't seen the Ring of Honor or the CZW show. That's that's what I'm mostly really talking about. You know, NXT was awesome. CZW last night was was pretty good. It wasn't as as. Oh no! But spoiler, I'm glad Black G's got the title. So yeah, um, yeah definitely. Long overdue, in my opinion. Yeah, and and honestly, what's his name? Suzio. That that guy, man. I I never liked him. You know, when, when the front first came out, I. Right. I just I don't know he was one of those guys but last night man I I'm I'm digging this guy. I gotta check it out because there was a few people kind of saying the same thing. I I fucked with him now man I, I like the guy, so he won he won me over last night and uh you know Drew Gulak that's that's another one of those guys that I just I really didn't see what the hype was about everybody was saying this guy is saving CZW and saving indie wrestling and all this shit. And you know now I, I like him. I still think he, he's a bit overrated when people say he's like you know one of the top guys on the indie scene. I think he puts on a fantastic match. Uh, a friend yeah. of mine never got to see him until uh, that House Hardcore show this past June. Uh, he he gained a fan that night from him. That's for sure. Yeah, he's he is he is good in the ring. But uh, yeah, it was it was a pretty decent show, man. The Wolves had a match last night. Yeah. Was, Something was, happened. The box were supposed to be on that show, but it didn't pan out. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That would. The Bucks haven't been in CZW in a really long time, haven't they? Yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, won't name names on that, but I don't remember what came up. But the stars didn't align. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Um, I actually recall them in CZW. Did they ever go to CZW? I, I don't know. I I do not know. I'd have to ask. I, I don't I don't recall that, but, but yeah, that would have been awesome, man. I think it's something that'll probably happen for sure. I mean, like, nice. he hadn't hadn't been there since two thousand four, and I mean, he would have done more for them uh, if they like DJ High said he would have loved to have done more of them, uh, you know. Yeah, because he's a class act. Had nothing bad to say about him, and you know, vice versa. Um. Yeah. I don't I know. So weird. Kevin Steen's in WWE. That is weird. With 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 El Generico, man. <laughs> with El Generico and Prince Devitt and fucking Pac and, Pac and, and Sammy Callahan and, and and I mean and Samurai de Soul. It's yeah, Samurai de Soul. How can I forget him? There it's you know. wild, man. It, it's a really wild time. It's a good time to be a wrestling fan. It is. That's what I'm saying, man. I mean. Right now, what we get fed on Monday nights is, is is probably some of the worst shit that we've seen. But boy, am I stoked for Thursdays. <laughs> yeah. But... Even for comedy, man. Enzo and Big Cass. Yeah. Boy, they can get over, man, on, on, on the main roster, I believe. Um, can't teach that. Yeah, but just, just the upcoming is, is, is really good, man. The indies are looking good. You know, thankfully, you know, Philly's getting a lot of indie shows recently, so that's good for us always. Yeah. Like you said, you know, the the House of Glory this weekend is going to be AJ Styles and, and Ricochet. Anybody in New York, go check that out. You'd be an idiot not to. That's Agreed. probably worth the admission itself. Uh, this weekend, you got Rob Van Dam and AJ Styles at, at Pro Wrestling Syndicate. And, yeah, um, they're actually both on that, that House of Glory show. Yeah, Rahway, New Jersey. Go check them out. Um... Yeah, man, it's 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 going to be good stuff. Then the next coming month, it's going to get even better. Yeah, yeah. Then we got uh, yeah, like you said, Ring of Honor, Chikara, and Royal Rumble All on the same weekend. And Jr. is coming to Philly. If anybody wants to check that out, I'm not really going to. I'm when not, is that? No. Uh, I think that's on that Sunday or Saturday, one of those days. But. Yeah, that'll look. I mean, and if anyone gets a chance, there is about it's a 30 minute video, but. It'll sell if you're on the fence about Wrestle Kingdom. Please watch it. It'll can it'll convert any anybody to want to watch that show if you're a wrestling fan. Now where's this uh, where's this video at? It's on YouTube. I'll post a link uh, to you. Yeah, post. Can you post the link on the on the on the Facebook page? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, you guys can go check that out. Facebook.com slash groups slash THT podcast. Go and check that footage out. Order Wrestle Kingdom. I guess support Jeff Jarrett and his uh his brilliant. Hey, whatever, man. He's trying to get it seems like an NWA thing going. Yeah. I'm not opposed. Um, that's actually that's that's a that's a brilliant way to look at it, man. He's 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 getting an NWA thing going. That's nice. Territories again. He's trying to get. I mean, I mean, it says a lot for New Japan to trust him with their product in North America. I mean, and I t- I think it took a lot of sell. I don't know if it was a lot of selling, but I mean, it's awesome. New Japan is going is coming to North American TV. I believe January. Yeah. January fifteenth. Yeah, and uh, I actually think they might be on somewhat bad terms now since uh, the the Wrestle Kingdom is going to be included on the network, on, on the New Japan network. And uh, I guess Jeff Jarrett didn't know about that. So, hmm. That's that's caused a conflict from, uh, you know, with these fucking dirt sheets and all those. Oh, uh, well, websites. whatever. Goddamn Dave Meltzer. But, uh... Yeah, man. Want to go ahead and uh, just let's go over tonight's matches and. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, get that because I gotta bounce in a sec. Yeah, give our picks and then uh, we can go ahead and go because we got TLCS starting. All right, we got uh, Goldust and Stardust against uh, the New Day. What do you think? Uh, I think it'll be the New Day. Get him over, um, and that's fine. Yeah, I'm gonna pick the same thing. Uh, next on we got Bray and, and Dean Ambrose. That's probably the toughest one to choose on the card. I'm gonna go ahead and go with uh, Bray Wyatt. I'll go Ambrose just to be opposite. All right, uh, Seth Rollins and John Cena. Of course, John Cena. That's uh, no question. <laughs> Uh, AJ Lee and Nikki Bella. I don't give a shit, but uh, um, uh, fun fact that uh, Jim Ross show is uh the day of WrestleMania. I mean the Royal Rumble. Nice, nice. That is a good wrestling weekend, folks. That is a good wrestling weekend. Um, I could care less. Yeah, I I'm not even gonna ask her because I really I don't know. But uh. What else do we have? We got the stairs match with uh, fucking Big Show and uh, Eric Rowan. I'm gonna say. I hope Eric Rowan. I, I hope Eric Rowan. I, I hope Eric Rowan. <laughs> yeah. God knows. But uh, we got Kane and Ryback in a sta- in a uh, chairs match. Uh, I'm gonna say Ryback. I hope. I'm gonna go with the big guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with the big guy. Also, I hope. Um, I could be wrong. Dolph. Yeah. And uh, fucking uh, Luke Harper, which uh, I'm I'm looking forward to this match probably the most. I'm gonna yeah, say- I'm, I'm I love both. Uh, I think it's going to be Harper, but I think it's going to be if that doesn't steal the show, if Ambrose and and White don't steal the show, that match might steal the show. Absolutely, you said Harper. I'm gonna go ahead and go with Ziggler. All right. I think that's about it as far as the show. So. That's it, folks. We got uh, we got about an hour left before we go ahead and go to TLCS. So, anything else you want to say before we head on out of here? Nah, man. Thanks for uh, for having me. I love doing this shit. It's fun. Always, man. Always. Um, all right, man. Love, peace, and chicken grease. There you go, man. Peace, all right, folks. Go ahead and uh, join us on on Twitter, THT Podcast. Go ahead and join me on iTunes. You can you know subscribe THT Wrestling Podcast. Facebook.com slash groups slash THT podcast. YouTube, you can go ahead to Turnbuckle Corner. I got to get that changed to THT podcast so it can be easier. But uh, that's about it. Hot tag uh, podcast.weebly.com as well. Thanks once again for uh, Tony Rufo for joining me. And yeah, we're going to be back Tuesday, hopefully, if I'm alive. We'll be all alive. I don't know. Give it a listen. Yeah, there you go, man. Peace. All right. See ya.